All right, here with uh, industry luminary Lauren Lanning from Odd World Inhabitants. Thanks for joining us. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, on the day <laughs> after the big PS4 yeah, we're reveal. Just decompressing. I haven't even had breakfast yet. <laughs> Another <And> bye. <laughs> we're sitting in a Sid's hotel room. I ate an orange a minute ago. It's raw. Beds all, unmade. Yeah. <laughs> wet cl- towels on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> so, Lauren, you've been at this for a long time. You've been, you, you obviously, Odd World, a huge sort of uh, just gaming legacy. Uh, es- especially on PlayStation. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like oh. the PS1 stuff, especially. I think that was integral to our culture and DNA early on so oh nice nice it was funny because we started Oddworld, and i knew that playstation was a rumor right right and, and then i was like trying to get the money and then it became a real thing and then that was like the first most fun christmas i had <laughs> <laughs> you know with tommy tallarico i oh, stayed I, at his house he's a he's a great composer he did the yeah. uh earthworm yeah. gym soundtrack which <laughs> with which david perry was on stage yeah, so yeah. it comes full circle yeah, yeah. Totally. There you go. but, but so you go. in you know just generally what do you think about last night what do you think about the reveal and how does that make you feel you know being being in it for a while and having seen a lot of these things kind of come and go and having seen a lot of these things right and and so watching a, there's something's been happening, which is which is Sony's been inviting and discussing with developers something I haven't seen before, mm-hmm. right? And uh, usually we find out after the fact, and it's like pull out our hair. What do we do now? How do we figure <laughs> it out? Give us more instructions, you know. And uh, so that is a monumental shift in what I've perceived that the, as in the culture, right? And now you got Kaz and Shu and Andy and all these guys that actually knew how to build games and knew how to deal with developers and knew what we cared about and knew what we were complaining about. All of a sudden, it's like the the show's being run from this sect of mindset. And they're going, talk to the developers. And so now bringing that to now, right? So that's been very open and very surprising. And then to see what's coming out. So I didn't see the games till last night, like with everyone else. Right? Me, I, me neither for yeah, the most part. Me neither part, for so. the most part. Yeah, they keep it on lockdown. <laughs> and a couple of people were telling me, no, they're good. They're really good. And I'm like, yeah, I always hear that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm looking at it, I'm like, mm. there was some incredible stuff up there. I was, I was, uh, I was em- IMing and I go, some of this is intimidating, man. <laughs> it's really good. And there was, uh, uh, you know, the new kill zone or something, right? Just, as in, just in terms of like, what can Epic do? do not not epic games but the scale of epic right, right. what can that do and feel like and look like right and then that, that comes on screen you're like it can look like that right <laughs> you know really incredible both design and stuff but but the biggest thing is you know these guys haven't been developing on it for too long yeah that's the other thing right. it's really early you i mean see that is an early. example of what like early generation stuff oh gonna my look god like. yeah. yeah so there's two two massive standouts and then some game changers that i saw last night but the massive standouts were the quality of the content and the diversity of it right so you had quality on one level it's like this looks like a game that people have been working on for years now but it's actually running you know, you know and we've seen how many times have we seen the demos you know so and it's not what's actually running this is actually running so you go okay well maybe they were building it for a long time but they had to get it to run and here it is and it's all running and it looks like a finished shippable you know totally polished unbelievable uh, you know particle effects physics mm-hmm. scale is happening and and that's really you got you got when you look at the time and when you understand development you're going that's crazy but this this makes sense to me because just recently we uh, you know we, we we came back out on PSN with the Stranger HD mm-hmm. and so we redid that and we brought it up to HD and this stuff. But then then it was like well you know the Vita is is going to release and, and we think and and we got the, the the kit for it and everything and the guy said this is really a smooth transition you know and then the, so the effort that it took to get Stranger onto the Vita was a huge indicator of the change in culture and mm-hmm. the change in development philosophy. Something Here it was a really relatively low risk for us, which is Oddworld, which is like a micro mini publisher now. Which is, we publish our own stuff, sure. right? And in that, you just go, okay, so we brought it over there, low risk. And now we're like, you know, number one in the charts in Europe and, and the UK and still in the charts in the US on, on the system. And you're like, this is how it should be. You know, it it shouldn't break the bank. Right, just easier path to market. Easier and... path to market. You know, and you just go, oh, we we and we made a couple of mistakes. Look at this. Now we're listening to the audience. We made a couple of mistakes. Boom, we updated that. Right. So the beauty of that, and we were never doing that in the disc world, in the previous console world. So being that as an indicator, and then seeing what you see on the screen last night for the PS4, you go, I get how this is going, and it's a beautiful thing. And how how does it excite you, I guess, as a, as a creator, when you see, I guess, if it's any standout features or anything you saw where it's like, oh, that that gets me excited about what I can create? So uh, Media, Media Molecule is showing stuff, right? And I'm not even sure, like, what what is 
te- what is experiments that I'm watching, and then what is, what are what is actual you know releasable stuff that they're going to be focusing on, and and that in and of itself is is very interesting too because what you see happening now is more experimentation. Yeah. So there was a wider diversity of more creative content than I've ever seen in a lineup before. Right, and so so Sony, you know, look at the AIS awards, right? You, wa- you walk away with a number, game of the year, you know, these guys, and these guys are taking chances, and, and Sony's taking chances, and saying there's no there's no metric that says how good a game like this is going to do because no one's ever made a game like this. Let's mm-hmm. take Journey, right, or uh, you know, the Unfinished Swan, right? No one's ever made a game like that, and so most publishers would never touch that. Because there's no marketing statistics that someone can get up and say, we believe it'll sell. You know, instead it's saying, what might sell? What, what aren't we exploring? We right have right faith right. in this. We think this is and, good. And give yeah. people something they, they don't expect, not trying right. to give them just... I mean, you know, so there are plenty of games for that, just giving people what you know people are going to enjoy yeah. and have fun with, and that's great. But you kind of have to do both, right? You have yeah. to, like, hedge your bets and a little bit, but also say, hey, let's give people something totally new because that could change everything. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think it will. I think it will. So the sculpting, right? Immediately I'm going, oh, my God. Five-minute, ten-minute sculpting competitions globally. Everyone's submitting in real time. You're using the live video feed to see who the top runners-up are in round two, round three. Like, all of this stuff that can utilize the social features, all these things, you go, right there. Right there is a gem waiting to happen. Right. Now, regardless of how they go. And then they started puppeteering the guys <laughs> right? with, the, with the controllers, and I'm like, Game changer. Yeah, you know? and, and and this is Media Molecule. These guys are, are brilliant. They did Little Big Planet, which was incredibly yeah. groundbreaking. Yeah, um, it was. And they're doing Tearaway now on PS Vita, which looks incredibly charming. But these guys, I'm I'm starting to realize like what these guys can really do. And I mean, what we saw last night was really it was more of a vision. It was more of I don't know a tech demo is the right way to put it, but it was sort of like here's some of the stuff we're looking at for PS4. They're they're picking yeah. up the PlayStation Move to do this, and I I just it knocked my socks off. That was yeah. one of my favorite moments from the PS4 reveal the other night. Uh, I, I've never seen anything quite like that. It was incredibly bold. They yeah. threw caution to the wind and said, this is the kind of stuff we want to do. It, it reminded me of watching uh, back in the day, you know, watching like making of Jim Henson shows yep. or the Muppet shows, right? And you find out there's all these things going on in the scene. But it looked like there's hippies experimenting with technology, you know? <laughs> and they're not, they're not, you know, it's not, it's not the one Silicon Valley's like, yeah, that's going to, it's totally out of the blue. It's artistic. It's, totally, it's, it's creative, artistic yeah. and creative. Now, in Console development, artistic and creative, is something we like to talk about, but yeah. we don't like to fund. Yeah. Right? And it's not fun making it <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. you're so out of the box. But if those things are happening that quickly, uh, you know, the indicator of that, w- w- what that suggests is huge. And in a short amount of time and in a diversity. So people are playing in different directions. You know, so sculpting is on there. And uh, uh, you know, puppeteering. Just think about that. Just take, you know, so, so I haven't talked to the guys, but I'm like, here, two seconds, I'm like, oh my God. You know, kids could be doing plays with each other, right? And then other kids could be watching and rating how, how well the people are puppeteering the plays, like a live puppet show. You know, and being like a, a going to Burning Man, being a burner. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they do puppet shows out there. It's like awesome, you know? But uh, so these. these indicators are really exciting. But I got to say, the biggest game changer that I personally saw. And, uh, and I had a pretty good insight into what was going on in the hardware and the configuration. But to see the uh, connection between the Vita, the Gaikai, and remote play, right? And, and uh, I, I, I've been spending a lot of time in the, in the Silicon Valley tech social VC space, right? And these guys are monitoring humanity of, of a whole <laughs> different level. And you know, it's like that's mutual of Omaha for people, you know? And uh, the... the the big thing there is that people are just spending less time at home, period. And all these devices and the smartphones and tablets and, and iPads, are all of these things are just enabling people to do more things on the run, more things when they're having fun. They don't even have to worry about setting up a laptop anymore. They just take it out and they're still sitting on the ski lift. You know, so, so our whole relationship to computing has changed and that's changing our lifestyle and, and people are home less, period. So I had concerns looking at this next generation going, how do we really deal with that? You know, and, and there's a lot of struggles in console to be like through all these transitions of going, there's all this disruption, all this uncertainty. And I'm going, well, how do you beat that? Because I don't know that you can make people stay home more, right? So that was a big question for this generation of consoles. Right, for you me. have to bring value to it, some degree of value to it, kind of wherever you are, and, and be, able, be able to go home and have a great experience, but also have 
have some piece of that experience on the road. Like yeah. We talked a bit about yeah. sort of second screen type stuff briefly with just, you know, phone for support for tablets and phones and to be able to interact with the game. And somehow maybe it's in Drive Club and you set up a race and put out a challenge while you're, you know, while you're out and about. Uh, or, or like I mentioned with Vita Remote Play in a kind of, you know, more, more local level. Uh, <laughs> at least being able to play when the TV is occupied. It's yeah. kind of like wherever you are, whatever is happening, you can yeah. do something at least. Yeah. So, so, like, and I was aware of, of the APIs going for, you know, tablets, iOS, and stuff like that. I go, oh, that's really good. But that's helping me keep in touch at a certain level. And, and that's not, but that's not allowing me to play the, forest, the PS4 on the road, right? right? Mm-hmm. That's allowing me to update. That's allowing me to, to stay socially engaged with it. I mean, it's doing a lot of great things. But then you go, oh, and by the way, we bike Gaikai, and now you're going to be able to use your Vita. Uh, as long as you have Wi-Fi and right. you're basically remote playing your PS4, okay. Now, what console am I going to buy? Right. right, because I'm spending so much time on the road. So if I can get that gaming experience, right? Oh, it's not 1080p now; it's 720p. Oh, <laughs> so it's so disappointing, right? Yeah. Not not at all. I mean, when we put Stranger out of the Vita onto the big screen, 60 inch, I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" Yeah, like, that was just an output out of the Vita, and mm-hmm. I was just blown away. But uh, so you combine that, and I think, and I think you got you got a chance to really blow it wide open. The, the Gaikai stuff is really interesting, too, when Doug Perry took the stage. I mean, a lot of this stuff is still in the early stages. He was talking about the, his, his kind of grand vision for what Gaikai is, cloud services on PlayStation 4. Kind of, it's kind of in its infancy. They're starting to roll mm-hmm. this thing out. But a lot of the vision there was very, very interesting, the idea of being able to, you know, he said his, his long-term goal is to be able to play like anything, anywhere on any device. Mm-hmm. That's, that's powerful stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, the proof's going to be in the pudding. It's a ways off. It's not going to come out in six months or something like that. But that's where the vision is and that's pretty powerful i mean that's that's to me that to, really spoke to me i thought that was that was a true game changer it, it, it and it's and it's unintuitive right like what he's doing is really unintuitive and uh i'll give you an example uh when he showed nvidia in the beginning because I was, I was talking to dave when he was building guy kai and i was like wow he's just ambitious you know <laughs> it's, it's pretty radical stuff i mean it was like the investors the vc said We've analyzed what he's doing. It shouldn't work, but it does, so we should invest. And that's a quote, right? And, uh, and Dave's just clever. Uh, but in that, in that uh, the, the – using the example. So NVIDIA sees that a little long time ago. Mm-hmm. And Dave goes, no, you don't understand. I can have people testing your new cards in their current device. And, you're, and they're like, what? <laughs> you know, as long as your display is good and as long as your connectivity is good, you know, your connectivity is good, it's really now controls and video signal back, right? And servers are fast enough. And we're setting up all these server farms around the world and everyone wants to get involved. And he got, you know, I mean, the support that he built, the work that went into getting Guy Takai that it, what it is by the time Sony bought it was just immense. I mean, the work that he did traveling the globe, getting uh, providers to, to see the world differently, uh, getting fewer clicks to games. Right? Right. It like yeah, a it's really job. nice seeing the fruits of those labors now. Yeah, yeah, so, and, yeah. And, and here it is. So, um, uh, but, but still, it's kind of... It's gonna. It's still hard. It's gonna be. There's gonna be a lot of people that are like, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. And then they're gonna be like, Wait a minute. This is not the Vita. This is the PS4. Right. But I'm on the plane. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> so uh, huge. I think that's the game changer. That's gonna be a huge. Aside from all the other great things, and I think a lot of great things are happening, particularly in the dev in the in the dev environment, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that that is a more developer friendly machine. Um, but that ability is, I think, it's like wow. That's that's the one that's going to be a, a, a huge differentiator. Sweet. Well, it sounds sounds like we sold you at least a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit on one. You'll be buying one. <laughs> but so I'm curious as far as uh, what what you're going to be selling people. If you would just want to touch briefly and kind of what you're what you're yeah. looking at and working on uh, now and down the road. Well, we got you know Oddworld's doing some st- some things. We're doing new and tasty. We announced that in uh, in October in London, and uh, and that's looking really good and really fun. And just for people who haven't heard, if you want to explain what yeah, that is. Yeah. Oh, it's quick. Abe's Odyssey completely redone on 3D technology. But we call it uh, you know there's two things I call it nostalgia delicious <laughs> <laughs> or Neo nostalgic, you know. Nice. I think nostalgia delicious is cooler. But, like uh, but the idea there is like, how do we capture? Here's something that happened. We're listening to the audience more, right? And we can finally hear them. And when we're distributing at pro, uh, at retail, I personally, never got to hear the audience really. Yeah, you get some fan mail or something. But you got to do giant surveys and focus groups and all yeah, that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, and still yeah. you're only getting a really small sample, right. right? But it's not like you can go to every one of your fans can log in via their smartphone, whatever, and answer a poll, right? And we're starting to do a lot more of that. And and we were finding that what our audience was saying was like, we don't, we don't care about this and that. We care about those old-style 2D platformer games. And I was like, really? 
Like they really, really. And, and then we were studying that and we're going, why is that? You know, and, and when you think about it, you know, when I was just thinking about left, right, jump, I'm not steering my character. I'm not getting bad angle views. I'm always having a nice, beautiful, you know, hopefully piece of art in front of me. And I'm watching a guy that looks alive on a screen. And I'm not dealing with a lot of 3D issues. But what we realize is I'm not dealing with steering. I'm not dealing. And we're just going left and right with such an easy thing. How do we go, take that into 3D? And really start maximizing more of what 3D brings to that genre, but keep the simplicity of control so mm. that you're not steering, you're not. Th- so, in that game, you know, it looks just like James Odyssey, but way rezzed up and richer. And then you start moving, and the faster you're moving, all of a sudden the dimension's coming in, you know, and you get more of the world, and we can do so many more things because it's real time 3D. Interesting. But the idea was staying true to that platforming nature on the controls level. And so that's coming out. But I have, I have you know, and, and I think that'll look beautiful on the new system, on the PS4. Um, but it's not taking advantage of all these other cool features. And then I've been working on some stuff that is, is aimed at that. In fact, you know, personally, I was out there in Silicon Valley trying to raise money for an effort that would have required building a lot of the things that you actually have now, right? And that effort was, it was cost prohibitive. It, it was like... You know, and no one was funding $10 million ideas anymore in Silicon Valley, right? And so I'm like, wow, you know, uh, what, where's the solution to this? And, right. and, and then, but, but all of that thinking came from, um, you know, I built IP, right? And, and we own Audible today, and it's a wonderful thing. And I was always about, you got you to gotta build your IP, you got to own your IP. And I'm just looking at the world differently today because the world's different today. And so today the world I'm looking at is like people are the IP, so how do, I, how do I build things where the connectivity and the, the communications and the sharing, I mean, these are all buzzwords, but really it's about, it, it's about cultures being more connected to more passion points. And mm-hmm. passion points are friends, the passion points are shows, the passion points are news, whatever it is, right, hobbies. And some of them are very niche, too. It's like super niche in some cases. And so how do you not try and nail what's the best one, but yeah. how do you facilitate all of them, yeah. right? And that's like the difference with eBay, right? They weren't being a... Sotheby's, right? right like right. Sotheby was saying, if you're good enough <laughs> for us to have on our offer, you know, and then uh, we'll allow you to, you know, and then you got eBay going, hey, if you got an audience and you can find it, uh, why don't you sell it here? Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> now today, who would you rather own? Exactly. Sotheby's right, right, or eBay, right. right? And that's the future. So in looking at people, our IP, and the behaviors of people today is how do we, how do we translate that into new types of gaming? Well, that's like, you know, last night when I look at Dream and the, and the sculpting, I'm going, oh, my God, I get a million ideas that come right out of that, and I think they could be huge moneymakers, right? right. But, uh, and none of them are proven. But the behavior of the audience is proven, mm. right? So now for the first time, you're seeing consoles being able to harness more of that behavior. So in the, in the stuff that uh, I'm focusing on, hopefully we get to build it, you know, but I, I'm not saying it's cheap and I'm not <laughs> saying everyone's writing the check yet, but uh, it focuses more on that space. And what got me excited is it was a lot of money to try and build a lot of these things. And I think that there's huge opportunities in uh, uh, just witnessing Right. So, you know, we mentioned Machinima earlier in a, in a conversation. Machinima is like number one YouTube channel, over a billion v- views a month. Right. And all they're showing is game footage. And and so that that gives an indication of what's possible. But what we don't have is we don't have the Super Bowl of watching games yet. Right. So we watch sports and sports is kind of like. There's gaming, and then people have fans, right? Okay, well, that's like competition gaming now, and there's clans, and there's teams, and they're getting some visibility, and those kids are actually making some money. That's all wonderful. But where's our Super Bowl? You know, like, where is that thing where what we really care deeply about and really passionate about, like how people are with sports, where is that, and where's our gathering, and where are people coming together to sort of celebrate their issues or or (laughs) or fight for their issues, Uh, and where's that happening? You know, and and what I see is that's not really happening, and that's the area that I want dial in on mm. but in order to have built all the technology to do that you know just on the software front and uh it was cost prohibitive right, and right. here it is it's like you're solving all these problems and it's like wait a minute you got that control you got this camera you got this social connectivity and you got a share button here come and use it the yeah. share <laughs> button the share button to me was like maybe the single biggest thing like i mean of, of, of anything the graphics are amazing the features <laughs> are amazing i love the controller the games are great but the share button being able to put video up on the web and just having it being kind of automatically recorded all the time mm-hmm. i i just see like tremendous potential oh, it's for gonna that. Be huge. It's yeah. gonna be huge you know and then the question is gonna be well what's our editing capability you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and it's so one step at a time but be, that you know the guy who's getting a million views for his video about a playthrough on a game and a guy who's getting 25,000 views it usually comes down to their editing and their tech, right, right? Mm-hmm. so they're putting their own little s- subject on that but but it was a great example and I think it was uh, uh, I don't remember which game did this but it was it was towards the beginning it, it might have been uh, uh, 
the infamous uh, – no, I mean, uh, it might have been Kill Zone. Okay. I'm not sure. But after the play, right, and you're like – Oh, <laughs> the pop that right online? Yeah, it was yeah, Kill Zone. Yeah, it was Kill Zone, yeah. And Kill Zone. And, and now you can go to the up. Facebook page and we'll look yeah. at that video. Yeah. Cool, yeah. I mean, there you go. Yep. Right? Yeah. Because it, it's all about reducing friction. Yep. Right? right? So how do we reduce friction first for the development community? And then second, how do we do reduce friction for the user? Right? And if we can reduce those frictions, you're, you're, you know, you're platinum. Like, yep. You know, as long as you don't. You know, make a really bonehead move, which yeah. is we're all capable of doing at times. But it's working. I mean, that wasn't that wasn't BS, you know. And uh, you know, having been involved with launches before, uh, you know, it just goes back to that testament of how much time did they really spend on this so far? How right. much of a development system was there? But you got you know, you got Cerny involved with the hardware, right? Now Mark is like. You know, I mean, I pitched Abe Mark, Abe's Odyssey to Mark before, before we made it. You know, wow. when he was at Universal. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I was always really impressed with the guy, and he's done a lot of impressive things. But for, I think the smartest thing Sony did was like get guys like that, right? To say, give them the reins and be like, give them yeah. the reins because they know all the issues. They used to be the ones pulling their hair out because they they weren't getting the answers they needed, and here they are, and now they're developing systems. Right. And you go, oh, that's making a huge difference, right. and the difference is on the screen. Fantastic. Sweet. Well, yeah. Thanks so much for coming, Lauren. I'd hey, love it's to my pleasure. talk forever. We uh, we got this is our checkout time, and one more, <laughs> one more guest coming up. But we should have you on again soon and kind of dive deep. And, hey, I'd love uh, to anytime, and especially once you're able to talk about kind of your your next big thing you're working yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I really, detail, but. I really, uh, you know, I'm excited about it. I hope I hope we're able to pull it off. I hope to be working with Sony on it on various levels. And uh, I just think you guys have done great. So congratulations. Well, thank you, Mr. Lanning. Always a pleasure. And uh, we're gonna have another guest coming right up. Nice. <laughs> 